Hey everyone, I'm Zach Hobbs and welcome to this new batch of Richard Thompson lessons. Uh, for those of you who watched the first batch that came out, uh, you'll know that I'm Richard's grandson and have been teaching his music and his guitar playing uh, for a very long time. Um, I started studying it when I was probably about 13 myself. I uh, taught a lot of it myself and have gone on to teach it at our family guitar camp in New York. Um, and something I've been teaching and have a lot of experience with. So uh, this ba new batch of lessons is going to be completely dedicated to some of the songs from the era where he was making music with my grandmother Linda. Um, essentially as well, the, the finger picking throughout all these, so if I start on this G, um, you can kind of see, see what the finger picking kind of uh, continues with throughout. So it starts, um, all I'm doing is have, I've got my third finger on the bottom string a uh, fifth fret up from the capo, so the actual tenth fret, but <clears throat> um, again, nominally, nominal frets, nominal uh, chord shapes. Uh, and then I'm playing the open three strings of D, G, and B, and that's going to be my G chord. So I'm not actually fretting anything other than that bottom string. What you'll notice is uh, it's to kind of um, uh, it's a really nice thing with these kind of styles and when you want to kind of give some air to finger picked songs is I only really hit um, a strong bass note at the start of the bar for each chord. So this is the little tag at the end of the verse or the A section which has the I need you at the dimming of the day has the little refrain on it which is that C add nine again for one bar and then G for half a bar, back to D, and then to G, and then again half bar, and we will tackle this one now because it's quite an integral part of um, of the uh, of the arrangement. So the other bit's a bit more about filling things out. Um, so you have that C add nine for one bar, G, D, G. And then we have that, this little movement into these things. It's all about uh, hammer-ons hammer and pull-offs. Um, and there's certain little tricks you can do if you did the beeswing lesson um, that make it sound extra Celtic. But uh, adding a nice little hammer-on um, onto the third fret of the B string at the top of that, over that G string, of that G chord, is always a really nice um, flavour. So again, I'm just hammering on from open B to third fret B. Um, just again to give that feel. play up there and then one more thing I did on the D as well is that just slide up in thirds from three and two to five and three and then seven and five so again back up to that D um, but everything else is pretty just based on the melody first bit so um, it's all there's really it's really out of two shapes and so it's these two shapes <clears throat> the first one um, is a little bit tricky to play because we're gonna be barring the uh, second fret of the D and G strings with our first finger so that uh, A and E we've got um, a G being played on the third fret of the bottom string with our second finger. So now we have three, not playing the A string for this chord. Two on the D, two on the G. Um, so the, st 
starting off point for this is your third finger on the third fret of the A, your first finger on the first fret of the D, and your second finger on the second fret of the G. And then B string open. So and then that section sounds like this. So this is pretty. Um, so the verse has, it's pretty straight. Uh, it starts on that D that we hammered into, is right where it starts. I know the way. So it's straight in there. Um, so D. So again, I'm just doing very kind of classic ballad playing. But there's these little bits like that which we need to get the bass just right. Um, to get the feel. Um, so we have D and then it goes into the chorus which is full G again so we get that G back in the bass again uh, so it goes from G to a D with an F sharp in the bass E minor It's got that, that cool little movement in there. Okay, so that's our first chord, that's our G. Then we have our C chord. Now this looks just like your A minor 7 uh, or you can see it's your C chord without the third finger, uh, and that's because we're going to use the bottom two low strings, the C and the G, to finish out this chord. So there you go, so it's just that one little one in the um, in the verse, and then there's one little one extra in the uh, in the chorus. And as you can see as well, I'm playing around with the and Richard might also use the that little slide up here, all those bits. So there you go. So the only real thing is that that little one on the C uh, and there's two over D.